What's up, athletes? Today, we're going over the top seven drills you can use to improve your tennis game from home and, well, <laughs> stay sane. First up, slow shadow swings. Now, as the name suggests, we're gonna be slowing things down. And the reason why is because when you're doing your regular shadow swings, which is what most tennis players who've been trying to maintain their game have been doing, the problem is that there are a few differences between when you're doing your shadows and when you're actually on the court and you're, you're hitting a ball. For example, let's take my forehand. Let's say I'm grooving my forehand. Well, as the ball is coming, first of all, I'm making calculations for the trajectory of the ball. I'm calculating where the position is gonna be. And this is gonna affect my, my technique and my footwork. As I'm accelerating forward, I'm unconsciously bracing for impact. On contact, the ball is actually providing resistance against my swing, which is gonna alter my swing path. Now, let's take me doing my shadow swings at home. Well, I've got no ball to calculate. I've got no resistance I'm hitting against. And most importantly, there's no feedback for whether I hit a good shot or not, whether I was preparing early enough or not. So there's nothing to really tell, oh, I did a good technique, oh, my contact was good. And so these differences carried out over the span of one, two, three months, they develop into to bad habits. And these bad habits actually become difficult to get rid of once we step back onto the court. So to avoid this trap and also avoid getting rusty, we're gonna make a few modifications to our training. First up, I want you to get your camera and you're gonna record yourself from the front angle. So let's say I'm in the ready position, I'm doing my forehand. My chest is gonna be facing the camera and one from the side angle. As I turn, my chest would face the camera again. And these two angles are gonna provide you with more of a 3D image of exactly what you're doing on your stroke as opposed to just you know, looking at yourself from a side view and seeing, all right, what's my racket path doing? So once you've got these two angles, we're moving on to diagnosis. Now for the diagnosis, instead of focusing on five different stuff, even, even though we can all po probably improve on at least five different things, maybe besides this guy, <laughs> but instead of focusing on all of this stuff, focusing on one thing, Right? Getting a diagnosis and then eliminating all the techniques until you reach the number one thing that you feel that if you really locked in the next time you stepped onto the court, that you would have the most dramatic improvements. By really focusing in on that one thing, that's where the real progress starts to be made. Now, if you really want to focus in on those right techniques, we send weekly tennis instructions on our newsletter. It's called the Insider's Digest where we break down the most powerful techniques you can be practicing and implementing into your tennis game. So you can join by clicking the link below, the first link in the description below, and signing up. Now once you've found that one thing you're working on, next you're gonna slow down your stroke. I'm gonna use the forehand as an example here. And let's say my, my back swing is huge and I'm trying to make it more compact. Well, first, I want you to very slowly and deliberately do your current technique. So if you've got a large backswing, whatever problem you're having, I want you to actually deliberately do it, but be very conscious of what you're doing. Got it? All right, now we're gonna do the ideal technique and do this very slowly and methodically. If you make any mistakes, it's fine. Just really try to be mindful of what's going on. And by alternating between doing it wrong and doing it right, you can start to get more awareness over the difference between the two. So once you're back onto the court, you might not you know, be doing, it, doing the new techniques perfectly, but let's say you shank the ball into the net. Well, at least now you know what you did wrong and you're able to consciously start fixing it. And that's the first step to solving any problem. Numero dos, weighted shadow swings. Now in the modern game of tennis, I see a lot of tennis players, especially at the club level, using typically lighter rackets. And the main advantage of a lighter racket is, you know, especially starting out, you can maneuver the racket easier. So 
you can develop control, you can get away with, with just doing this with your shot, right? Which is probably what you see at your club. And while this gets you to a certain level and is okay for the short term, ultimately it can lead to certain bad habits. For example, arming the shot or not preparing as early as we could because we could still get away with doing this at lower levels with lighter rackets. But if you really wanna to advance to the higher levels of play, say 4-0, 5-0 plus levels, then stuff like footwork and preparing quickly and utilizing larger muscles in your body to more efficiently generate power becomes really critical. And when you're, when you're left arming your shot or you're preparing really slow, you're actually just putting a cap on your, on your power. So to fix that today, we're gonna add a little bit of weight to our swing. Using a heavier racket encourages our body to use larger muscles like our legs, our hips, our core, which consequently encourages us to prepare early and also load more on our shots. I don't know what's up with me and my forehand. That's all I've been demonstrating so far. <laughs> so to start, we're actually not gonna use the racket. We're gonna start with something that weighs between three to five pounds. So I have an ankle weight here. And what you're gonna do is just slow, start slowly swinging. So whatever stroke you're working on, just slowly swing. And I wanna leave a disclaimer here. Make sure that you're not injuring yourself by swinging too hard. You wanna protect your shoulder and forearm joints. And so really focus here on just doing slow swings, focusing on more of the fluidity of the arm action and utilizing a relaxed motion from the rest of your body. On my backhand side, I'm focusing on fully coiling. I'm letting the weight take my arm down so that I'm, I'm keeping my arm relaxed and just fluidly accelerating forward by uncoiling from the ground up. And for the serve, it's gonna be the same thing, staying relaxed, really protecting the shoulder joint. You can even use a lighter weight if you need to here and just allow the, allow the weight to naturally rotate your shoulder back as you accelerate upward. After you've started to develop this natural sense of relaxation and power that's coming from your legs and your core, you can progress by using two rackets. So take two rackets and you can just tape them together. So once you've got your two rackets taped together, you can continue with the same style of progression. And so you're gonna really focus again on coiling fully, allowing your arm to naturally drop down and accelerate forward as you focus on uncoiling from the legs and the hips and the core. You'll notice that the weight is more realistically distributed toward the racket head here. So for certain techniques, if you're working on say, the ATP style forehand or the correct racket dropping action, this is where you'll really start to feel more of the stretch from the inertia on your strokes. All right, now once you get tired of swinging this super heavy weight, you can throw it away and you can move on to number three, visual imagery. <laughs> okay, I promise never to do that again, <laughs> but Visual imagery, also known as visualization, is one of the most powerful techniques that you can start implementing into your tennis game. And in fact, it's so powerful that even Olympic athletes, they include this as a daily discipline as part of their training regimen. And of course, great tennis players like John McEnroe have said, sometimes when I'm hitting, I see shots flash across my eyes before I hit them. Yet, if you were to walk up to Jan John McEnroe in that moment and you, know, you were to ask, what were you doing with your hand? What were you doing with your arm there? Chances are, he probably wouldn't be able to answer you. The problem with trying to use words to develop your technique is words by very nature can't give you an experience. They can only direct you toward the experience of developing a certain technique. And to really truly grasp the proper mechanics, you need to actually go through the motions, feel what's correct, see what's correct. And of course, you can't execute something until you see it. Now, visualization for all you science geeks out there is proved to be one of the most powerful things that you can do or the, the most powerful ways of thinking because when they scanned the physiology of what was occurring in the brain, the neural patterns of visualization were almost identical or very, very similar to actual reality. So visualizing yourself hitting the ball is 
very, very similar to actually being on the court and hitting the ball if done effectively. So how are we going to do that? We're going to kick things off by actually looking at the pros. So I want you to pick your favorite player. If it's this guy or this guy, leave me one of these. And you're just going to soak in the footage of the, the pros that you're watching. And what's going to happen is a process called osmosis. Osmosis is basically the unconscious assimilation of behaviors, ideas, and by looking at these pros, you can start unconsciously developing more and more similar techniques to the players that you admire. At the same time, I want you to consciously try to develop mental images. So really get like almost like you're taking snapshots. Imagine there's a camera in your brain and take snapshots, take mental pictures of what you're seeing. Next, I want you to close your eyes as you're doing your stroke and you're just going to imagine whatever you saw playing through your head as you do your technique. I said I would stop beforehand. <laughs> and when you step back onto the court, you might even still see these mental images playing through your mind in your matches, and that's exactly what you want. So instead of going onto your match and thinking, you know, oh, I gotta pronate on my serve, etc., now you've got this clear arsenal of mental images that you can unleash against your opponent and just, <laughs> okay. And once you step back on onto the court, you'll still have these clear mental snapshots playing through your mind as you hit the ball. And that's ultimately going to help you with your consistency and power and technique. Number four, resisted shadow swings. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my favorite feelings from being on the court is right after I've hit that smoldering winner that my opponent doesn't even try to get. And the only way to really consistently reproduce a shot like this is to be able to have confidence to produce that power, whether it's your serve or your backhand or your forehand. So the problem is that when most players try to hit harder, they do it at the cost of consistency. And, and here's why. Most players, when they think about hitting harder, they think, you know, I have to try harder. I have to swing my arm harder. But what does this cause? This causes a lack of stretching the larger muscles in your body, like your legs and your oblique muscles, taking your arm further back, and then really trying to force the ball in, which causes tightness, which in turn causes frustrating, unforced errors. Instead, if we were to focus on really loading our muscles before we explode back up into the shot, then we can use the philosophy that Rick Macy calls trying not to try. Or as Bruce Lee says, you can call it the art of fighting without fighting. So with that said, I found this to be one of the best drills that you can be implementing to add more racketed speed and ultimately add more power to whatever stroke you're working on. It's kind of like running in sand with ankle weights. You know, every step you take, you start wondering, you know, why was he, why did I even go in the sand in the first place? But you know, once you take those ankle weights off, once you step back onto the concrete, well, you feel like you're flying. Specifically, we're going to be using what's called drag to create more resistance in our swing. Drag is basically the resistance of the air against the velocity of your swing. And by changing this modern tennis racket into something less aerodynamic like this, we can start to add a little more racketed speed to our strokes. Now this right here is used to pick up tennis balls and it's harder to swing than a tennis racket. And if you've never seen this before, if it looks completely weird to you, well, you can also get a PVC pipe at your local hardware store, which is like one to three bucks. And what you'll find is this is a little harder to swing than your normal shot. And it's going to force you to coil more, focus on coiling your body more and really exploding with larger muscles. Because if you're just arming the shot, you're not going to hear anything, right? You're not going to hear this. Whoa, nope, do not do that. Do not. Now what you might find when you're using the tube is it's a little awkward for the serve. And we actually offer more specific recommendations when it comes to resistance training on the serve. And Dady is actually covering that more in depth in next week's video, which is going to be on specifically getting you more power on the serve. So be on the lookout for that by subscribing and hitting the bell notification button. Once you've done about 20 reps of this, you'll need a racket and a racket cover. Now, if you don't have a racket cover that's shaped like this, you can alternatively get a plastic bag and simply wrap it around your racket. As you continue with your progression, make sure to really focus on keeping your arms relaxed 
and generating power from the legs and your core. Now once you finish your 20 reps and you take the racket off, you're gonna feel like this. All right, athletes, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you did, please leave us a like and share it with your other tennis junkies who might benefit from the video. Now we'll be releasing part two of this video. It kind of lasted longer than we thought. Uh, so we'll be releasing part two next week. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out because this video is gonna be awesome. Until next time guys, go out and wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> stay inside, stay safe, train hard. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. And then tape them, Daytree. You got a tape. You got a tape. Home training scene four. By the way, Day Day, I, I, I just completely stopped doing the takes because to, there probably is not enough space to fit all the zeros that would be at the end. So. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I'm gonna use